couple problems that I've ran into on replacing these cables. I was just watching some other videos. There's not there's not very many videos on the, the check valve down here. This is a check valve. And this is about three inches long and it has a hole crosswise through the cylinder. So this center piece has to be turned the right direction and it has to be at the right depth. So if it's not at the right depth, the hole doesn't line up with the hole in the housing. And if it's not turned the right direction, it doesn't line up. So it's got to be turned right and it's got to be at the right depth. Or the hole doesn't line up and stuff gets reared from there. Stuff runs slow. You might lose your left, but right works and everything else. It's kind of kind of messed up. But normally you wouldn't have to mess with that. I've seen a couple other people that said they're replacing their cables every three or four years. That seems pretty frequent to me. I've I've been plowing 24, this is the 24th or 25th years. I've only replaced my cables once. The problem I had in here is um you can see the hole down there in the bottom that I drilled inside. We drilled the hole in the bottom of both these because sometimes they'd fill up with water, freeze, and then you couldn't stroke the arm enough. But the problem I had, I didn't think I was going to have to mess with that check valve, and the problem I had is the, uh, the end of the housing here where the cable comes into the end of that piece right there. You can see how it's kind of crimped into an octagon shape. The old cable wasn't crimped octagon like that. It was round, and where the cable came into it was tapered. So the problem I had when I replaced my cables is the hole that that has to go up into when you stroke the cable up. If the cable's not centered, the edge of the uh, crimped part hooks the hole, and it won't come up past that. So it wasn't this one. It was the other one, the up and down, actually took a light grinder and just took the octagon corners off and then I feathered the end where the cable comes in feathered it and kind of tapered it down a little bit because that it just it was screwing me up it wouldn't go up into the hole but at that point you know there's not much else you can do and uh, I just kind of gotten into this you know back in the day and my buddy told me well if you can't make it stroke anymore you couldn't adjust it anymore you know he said you're gonna have to get into that check valve there and uh, that'll that'll tweak stuff one way or another. So that was what I did <clears throat> when I replaced these cables. These cables have been on here for about eight or nine years, um, and I actually ground these cross marks in there and the bottom cross mark because if I mean this is what started this for me right here. The last storm I was pushing on, for whatever reason, this doesn't like to go up all the way. If you if you just lean on the lever to go up, when it deadheads up, it doesn't like to come back down. And usually I can kind of tap the lever down, you know, give it a little bump, and it'd go ahead and break, you know, break loose and come on down. This last storm, not a, wasn't happening. So I knew I was going to have to get into the check valve to get it to come down. And it was coming down real slow, part of the cable down here dilemma I was telling you about. So I ended up cracking this loose on the on the job site in the middle of a storm and it it turned this here and that's why i'm saying you got to have the right depth on this i literally turned this from we'll say eight o'clock to ten o'clock bam the blade came down that's all it took turning this from eight o'clock to ten o'clock so it was like cool that solved that problem got back in the cab real quick up and down worked great left and right worked great still so when i tighten the jam nut up though there's an o-ring underneath here you can just see it right there in the top. When I tighten that jam, snugged it back up a little bit. You don't want to over tighten it or anything because that O-ring in there just kicks my ass more than anything. But it was just enough to tweak that O-ring and it started pissing fluid. And I seen it was pissing fluid so before I left the site and headed home, which was only about 10 minutes away, I torqued that nut down a little bit more to try to curb the fluid leak. Freaking five degrees or something. I was trying to avoid messing with it outside. Barely got home. By the time I got home, I mean, I got a couple miles towards the house and started kicking drifts up over the top of the cab. And I thought, what the hell? And when I realized it bled down that much in the couple miles I drove, drove him. So I raised it on up and every about three, four minutes I had to keep bumping it up. By the time I got home, I barely made it in the driveway. I mean, it was just starting to drag the ground when I got to my driveway. But that, that check valve, 
That's why I'm making this video. I didn't see much other information on it. Like I said, it's about three inches long and it's got a hole through it. That hole has to be at the right depth up and down and it has to be turned the right direction. So it took me a while. First time I messed with it and put them cables on. I mean, I'll be honest with you, it kicked my ass for a weekend. It was summer, I was messing with it, so it wasn't no pressure, but I messed with that for two damn days before I got it back to the right depth and stuff. So I always take a picture, come in from the side, you know, this was exactly four, four threads, and take a picture of it so I know exactly where it is. And that's why I only put three slots on this, so I got one side that didn't have a slot to help me identify how far I've turned this but literally to make the drop the blade drop and everything work perfect it was literally I turned that from 8 o'clock to 10 o'clock that was all it took blade drop down everything's working good but that damn o-rings leaking so I'm gonna have to pull the thing out and uh, I went and just got an o-ring kit I mean I went through probably eight o-rings the first time I messed with this just couldn't make it stop leaking it's got to be exactly the right size the right diameter a rubber the whole nine yards so we're just passing that on man if you're gonna mess with that take some pics of it see exactly how far out it is from that that uh, nut that's holding everything in there and uh, that'll save you a lot of grief because when I messed with it I just took it on out and thought yeah this looks about right good lord hours went by messing with that trying to find where it was I could get it to go up and down but it wouldn't turn left and right you know then I'd get it to go left and right and it'd go up but it wouldn't come down it was a disaster. It's the only complaint I've had on this plow since the 24 years I've had it was that was just a disaster to deal with. So just pass that on. Uh, check the depth. Make sure you you know take a pick. Do everything you can to make sure that when you take, put that back in right, that it's in the exact same position it was if everything was working good in the first place. And like I said, I wouldn't have had to have messed with it, but the new cables that crimped in was just not the same as what came out. That's what caused me grief. Couldn't get it to pull up in the hole because it's not perfectly centered. And it all came down to just adjusting this a little bit and then everything worked great. So like I said, it's perfect again now. I just got to deal with that damn O-ring. So everybody be safe.